This video is to show you how to run Holtz method on a data set. Um, so Holtz method um, is good for trending data uh, and you need an initial what are called alpha and beta, they're the smoothing constants. Uh, I'm just going to set them to 0.2, I'm actually just working through an example I gave my group here. Um, so 0.2 and 0.2 for my alpha beta. For Holtz method I'm going to start with um, the second level as the second y um, and then the second trend as the difference between the second y and the first y. Um, we're trying to forecast sales here. We want to forecast four quarters into the future. We have time series data here. Um, and um, so these two uh, values that I just got are called my initial values. They allow me to get my forecast for the third time period, which is actually quarter three of 2002. And finally, to get an error uh, between those two. So your forecast is just um, your level plus your trend, okay, for each time step, and your error is always your difference between your actual and your forecast. Now where we get into the kind of Holtz method part of this um, is when we start getting our next level. Uh, we take our um, alpha, you'll lock that reference, and then, uh, so alpha here, times by yt, that means our actual t, or our actual y at uh, the current time step, plus 1 minus alpha, which is again in b3. We're just doing this piece here, uh, times by our previous level and our previous trend, which were in c9 and d9, and we add those two together, previous level plus previous trend. And that gives us uh, our next level here. That formula we're ready to copy down the whole way. Once you've locked your alpha, uh, you can copy that down the whole way. And your trend is your beta. Okay, lock that. So beta here times by the current level minus the previous level. So LT minus LT minus 1 plus 1 minus beta, so 1 minus the B4, uh, times by T, T minus 1, that means our previous trend, which was in D9. Okay, and that will give us our trend formula, which we can then copy down the whole way down. Well, so that actually isn't too bad, because once you do these two formulas, and then you get your forecasts, uh, you can just copy everything down here. You can get your root mean squared error for this guy as well. Now first what we might want to do is go and um, clean up the bottom here. Be careful when you copy down. Often you uh, get some um, levels and trends down there that aren't supposed to be there. Now, Holtz method, what we're doing is we're assuming that we keep um, increasing by a trend for every time step. So we're assuming that we're trending upwards with Holtz method, but there's no seasonality. So to keep forecasting into the future, you just keep taking your last previous value and adding uh, a trend to it, uh, just like that. Or there's another formula for your forecast, F T plus K is equal to um, level T plus K times trend T, um, where K is the number of time steps ahead you're moving. So we can also do that in this case. And uh, lock these two. Once we get to the very last time step, this is where we start factoring in that K, or we can do that. Um, if you lock the last level, last trend, it'll keep reusing those and just um, basically keep adding a, um, the value of that last trend on by adding k times the trend, where k is your number of time steps ahead you're going. So usually what you're doing, you're doing your... Um, Holtz method to generate a forecast into the future here. Um, so let's say we want to go five time steps ahead, then our forecast would be the 954. Uh, now what we also want to do, it's wise to get an error measure. So let's go get our RMSE, our root mean squared error, by doing the square root of the sum squared of our errors. 
control shift down to grab them all divided by the count of our errors. Okay, and you'll notice that it's very large. Our forecast was 954 and our RMSC is 331. Next thing we can do here is to go and optimize um, these smoothing constraints with solver. That would be wise. So I went to the data tab and I went to solver and I'm going to go and select my RMSE here and minimize it by changing B3, B4, which are my alpha, beta. And two constraints, um, that alpha and beta need to be less than or equal to one and they also need to be greater than or equal to zero. The alpha and beta are my smoothing constraints and they all need to be between zero and one. I don't care what both of them do in this case. Click solve, click OK, and my RMSC got a little bit better at 308, but it's still very high compared to my forecast. Uh, now, um, next thing that's always wise and what we should have actually done first before we did anything here was to go and um, take a look at our data. Good idea is to generate a scatter plot of our data. Um, since we're doing it in hindsight, let's also put our forecasts in there and see how they look. So insert a scatter plot. I like this scatter plot here. So this is the scatter plot of my forecasts and my errors. Or sorry, scatter plot my forecasts and actual sales. And you'll notice something here. A couple things to notice with the scatter plot. Your sales are I have this repeating pattern. It's actually a seasonal pattern. It repeats every four quarters, if you will. The high sales being quarter four of each year, the lowest being quarter one. Um, okay, uh, another interesting thing to look at, which you should do once you're done the method, is also just take a look at your errors. Okay, you're going to notice that same problem with your errors. You're going to see that seasonal pattern. Okay. And it's going to show up in your errors because you missed capturing it in your forecast. Um, and you missed capturing it in your forecast because Holt's method is um, for purely trending data and not for um, not for um, seasonal data. Let's just bump this over here. Good. Okay, um, so you'll notice that your forecasts, sorry, and I need to fix my error plot here, your forecasts um, really don't capture this seasonal trend, so you're going to see it with your error plot again. Um, okay, and let's just go grab that again. So just go highlight your dates and control highlight your errors. Let me just pause this while I grab. Okay, so I've highlighted my dates and my errors, and I'm going to insert that scatter plot. And there we go. So if you take a look at your errors after you've run your Holtz method, this is always wise to do. Take a look at your errors and make sure that there are no patterns, for one, and that your errors aren't too large, and that they're nice and evenly distributed above and below zero. They are above and below zero, but they're incredibly large, the highest being over 600 here. Um, and picture your forecast is at 900. And also, too, you'll notice this pattern that repeats every four quarters, which is a seasonal pattern. That is not good either. Um, so this data would be much better suited to Holt Winters, which we're going to see in the next video um, that I'm creating for this on the same data set with the Holt Winters method.